Hello, ladies and gentlemen, fillies and gentle colts, and welcome to what I like to call Autumn Breeze Reads. Eh, growing at that title, it's the best I could come up with. And as it suggests, I am going to be doing a reading of a fic. This will be Big Brother by Obab Scribbler. I will be doing this all in one shot and voicing everybody, so please forgive me if I suck. Anyway, let's get into it. Dawn. Applejack was missing. Big Mac Nurse stared at her empty bed. The covers had been neatly turned down. That would be Granny Smith's doing. She turned down the covers every evening, as if she was convinced one night a tiny orange filly would scramble through the window, fall asleep, and come down to breakfast like nothing had happened. He wasn't stupid. It had taken twice as long for him to learn multiplication in school, and he needed to stand out long words in books. Didn't really like reading at all unless he was alone and no potty, nobody, no pony could see his lips moving. But he wasn't stupid. Convincing the rest of the world there was a difference between some stupid, however, was an ongoing struggle. Applejack had never treated him like he was stupid. She was so much younger, she listened and rapped as he ex would explain working on the farm to her and thought he was the smartest pony in the world. She wasn't old enough to use language he couldn't understand when he read her note. He pictured it, full of teeth marks and spit stains from being constantly pulled from under the china angel on the mantelpiece where she had left it. They all knew it by heart. It didn't make coping any easier. Treading as delicately as he could, which wasn't very, but Granny was practically deaf, so it wasn't didn't matter. Big Macintosh crossed the room and nudged Applejack's pillow to fluff it. It was his own private ritual. Granny turned down the covers. He fluffed the pillows. They both sat in extra place at mealtimes and then refused to look at the unused plate. He was the stallion of the family, now Pa was gone. He was supposed to look out for his little sister, but he had obviously done something wrong if she had just up and left without saying a word. He wasn't even... He wasn't given to introspection much into he wasn't given much in he wasn't given much into introspection. Couldn't spell it if told to write it down. But that bothered him. Why had she been so unhappy? Was she really so dissatisfied with life at Sweet Apple Acres that she had to leave it? And them? He sighed and went to the window. It was dawn. Bright light cresting the horizon like paint on a dark canvas. He had barely slept, and that wouldn't do. He had to work to finish today. Granny couldn't manage the bucking anymore. She tried, but it was mostly his job since her arthritis really took hold. He had to get bigger and stronger, so he could take care of things the way the stallion of the family was supposed to. He stayed at the window, thinking his private thoughts, until the sky exploded. That's why it's how it seemed, at least. A wash of multicolored light detonated and shot outward over the farm. Birds of the dawn cars abandoned their song to squawk and fly in all directions. Dozens of rabbits, squirrels, and other small animals dashed about the orchard. A crashing noise followed seconds after the rainbow explosion, as if the universe was stamping as if hooves. What was that? Granny burst through the door, bleary-eyed but alert. Did the boiler explode again? Big Macintosh tossed his head at the quivering sky. The ring of colored light was still traveling away into the distance, like a gigantic ripple in the fabric of reality. His mouth hung open, but he couldn't help himself. He had never seen anything like it before. What in tarnation? Gray Smith squinted at it. What in the heck is that? Big Macintosh didn't know. A strange feeling coalesced in his belly. He wouldn't realize until later that it was excitement. That rainbow ring was a portent, or a sign, or something else significant for which he didn't have words. He could feel it in his fetlocks. Granny, he said slowly. Why is it, young Applejack? Where? She scanned the road. Dang, Philly. Why was a June bug on a string? I don't see her. Not yet. He smiled, even though he couldn't yet hear the clatter of tiny orange hooves. Soon. You think? Yep. He turned from the window. 
gonna wait for her at the gate. Granny watched him with narrowed eyes. Y'all be wasting good booking time! Yep. You must be sure if you're willing to neglect booking. Yep. A smile creased her wrinkled face. Good enough for me! Midday. Big Macintosh stood at the crest of the hill and watched his sister and her friend darting between the trees. Midday sun dappled orange and blue coats as the two little ponies played. No matter how old she acted or how much responsibility she tried to take on, Applejack was still a filly at heart. It would be a couple more years before she could reasonably be called a mare, and he would have to start worrying about stallions courting her. In his humble opinion, she should act like a filly as much as she could while she could. But the only time she let her guard down seemed to be when that little blue pegasus came running, came a call. He was staying in plain view, but neither filly spied him. They were too absorbed in chasing each other in some complicated game of tag mixed with hide and seek and rugby. Hmm. Pegasus arrowed up between the branches. A swish of leaves was the only indication where she had gone. He watched Applejack canter into view, spot the leaves, and pretend not to, to notice them. She slowed to a trot, but when the Pegasus tried to surprise her from above, she was ready. Somehow slewed her body to one side and turned their madcap roll into her pinning the other pony. Ow in! The Pegasus spat out a mouthful of leaves. A rainbow mane and tail studded with twigs and bits of bark. No way! Yeah way! Another roll and their positions were reversed. A single leaf was stuck to the Pegasus' flank. It looked a little like a cutie mark, but flaked away to reveal the actual mark beneath. Yep, on their way to becoming mares, but still fillies in all the ways they counted. No way! Applejack blew out of breath. God darn it, you weigh a ton! No more apple pies for you. What? Pegasus was aghast. No fair. I love apple pies. I can tell. You're breaking my ribs. Aw, oh, man. Pegasus beat her wings and lifted her weight off. Only for Applejack to launch herself and reverse their positions once more. I can't believe you fell for that. Applejack grinned. I let you win. Sure you did. Oh, look. There goes the flying pig. Pegasus blinked. Now that be awesome. Applejack made a face. Y'all think everything would be better with wings. Well, it would. Nah, uh huh. Imagine raccoons and rabbits and squirrels with wings. They'd be so much cooler than they are now. It'd be gosh darn awful. They'd reach all the apples before we could pick them. Nah, uh, cause you'd have wings too. So you could chase them off. You wouldn't have to learn to buck anymore either. You could just take the apples right off the branches. But I like bucking. Why would I want wings? Duh. Because everything would be awesome with wings. I'm awesome just the way I am. Nuh uh. I beat you without wings today, didn't I? The Pegasus pouted. Totally not awesome. Big Macintosh allowed a small smile to turn up his mouth. Yep. Sure did do Applejack good to act like a filly sometimes. He turned away and hid behind some bushes before she could see him and demand a bucking lesson. Dusk. There was a lot of satisfaction to be had in doing a simple job well. Apple bucking was a balance of strength and accuracy, but not exactly academic. Neither was Big Macintosh. He had long ago reconciled himself in his, to his shortcomings and lo no longer felt like he had to justify himself to the world. Either ponies accepted him the way he was, or they didn't and weren't worth knowing anyhow. This was, had definitely been a Hearts and Hooves day to remember. Or not. Usually Bucking helped him order his thoughts, but today had left him in such a tizzy, he was still reshoving things in his head. He, he kicked out one hind leg and a tumble of red delicious landed in each of the three baskets he had positioned. Taking a handle with his, between his teeth, he dragged each to the cart and maneuvered them up the ramp. When he was done, he checked to make sure he hadn't missed any and arranged himself into the harness to pull the entire load through the orchard for checking. 
Thrang would take out the bad ones and save what she could, turn the others into mash for compost, or one of those liniments she kept for when he or Applejack pulled a muscle, which was often. He looked around him as he walked, wondering where in the heck his sister was. She had been due to help him today, but in all the confusion with Cheerly, he had forgotten. Now, trying to cram all the work into his evening, he felt the slight stirring of resentment that Applejack had apparently used his absence to sneak away and do her own thing. He frowned at the resentment until it scared away back into its box. Applejack wasn't that kind of pony. She wouldn't sky of work unless something important had come up. Which, given some of the things she had gotten mixed up in since Twilight Sparkle had come to town, could just about be anything. Had another dragon attacked? Was she helping rescue a friend from, from underground jewel thieves? Could she have been whisked away to Candlelot on Princess Celestia's orders? He was still impressed that a practical down-home pony from their family was hobnobbing with the upper crust without picking up all sorts of silly airs and graces. Applejack was a level-headed, as level-headed today as she had been, as she had ever been since the day she got her cutie mark and he was proud of her. He dragged the cart into the barn and was unloading the baskets when he noticed the ladder from the hayloft on the floor. Usually it sat by the hayloft door, leading down to the, to the floor, but it had fallen or been kicked over. He couldn't park the cart after unloading with it there, so he hastily stashed the baskets where Granny could reach them in the morning and gripped the ladder between his teeth. He took two smaller ponies to maneuver the thing usually. Applejack and Apple Bloom typically worked together since Granny could barely move her withers to pick out more than apples these days. It was no trouble for him, however. He gently placed it up and put it back where it should be. As he turned away, the sound of movement made his ears twitch. It was coming from the hayloft. He turned back, thinking it may be a raccoon or a stray squirrel that had got him. Once, an entire family of Grickles had nestled up there and he had been forced to carry each squalling, scratching lizard bird down individually in special unbreakable carriers Twilight had whipped up for him. He hoped it wasn't more Grinkles. Although that would account for why the latter had been kicked down. Grinkles were very, were notoriously territorial when they chose a nesting spot. He climbed the ladder quietly, not wanting a face full of claws when he reached the top. I couldn't smell anything bad, but that was an indicator. Peering cautiously over the top rung, he froze. Well, Cheryl wasn't Grinkles. Applejack slept, curled up in the hay, her tail over her nose. It was how she used to sleep under her blankets as a filly when the boiler blew and the farmhouse got especially cold. Beside, behind her, Mouth open and a glob of drool ready to fall. Rainbow Dash was also sprawled across asleep in the hay. Neither had heard him approach. They were both clearly exhausted. What made him pause, however, wasn't the fact that his sister was napping up here while he was busy working in the orchards. It was the casually possessive hoof Rainbow Dash had thrown over her flank, and the fact that she was wearing Applejack's hat. Applejack never let any pony wear her hat. She had been protective of it ever since Pa gave it to her on one of his rare visits home. Not even he or Apple Bloom were allowed to touch it. But there Rainbow Dash was, bold and brash, wearing a askew like it was her own. Big Macintosh stayed where he was for a long moment. He considered ducking out of sight and coughing to give them a chance to reorder themselves they could all pretend things were as they had always been. As he was thinking this, however, Applejack shifted in her sleep, nuzzling backwards into the curve of Rainbow Dash's body. Her tail fell aside to reveal she was smiling in utter contentment. Big Macintosh descended the ladder with a soundlessness any pony would have been surprised at, given his suit plate hooves and massive body. He passed through the barn doors, but stopped, looking back over his shoulder. Going back to the ladder, he took it between his teeth and brought it down, using his knees to 
cushion the sound of it meeting the floor. It lay where it had been before he came in, giving no clue that he had moved it. That he had moved it. What's well, got you smiling like a fox with it, the key to the hen house? Papa Jack asked when she came into the kitchen. You find a sweetheart today? He thought about the question, and about Cheerilee. Sorta. Sorta? What kind of sweetheart's a sorta sweetheart? Complicated. Granny sighed. You young folk never make nothing simple. You're getting long in the tooth to keep button off settling down, Macintosh. He shrugged. Probably. You need to find some pony special. Get coupled and be happy. You and Applejack both. She shouldn't get to your age and have no pony special to call her own. He thought about the hayloft and smiled. Not a problem, Granny. You're smiling again. She glared at him. You gonna tell me why? Nope. Dang nabbit! No pony tells me nothing no more. Cause I'm old, ain't it? Y'all think I'm too old and old fashioned to know what's going on in your lives. I was young once too, you know. She continued to grumble as she sliced apples to go into the pie crust sitting on the counter. Big Macintosh looked out the window at the barn and just smiled. Apple Family Reunion Big Macintosh was admiring the shiny new barn when he heard hoofsteps behind him. Usually, he, wouldn't be, he would be able to tell exactly who it was, but with so many ponies crowded into the old homestead, there were too many to choose from. Whoever it was walked lightly, not with heavy gait of a workhorse like himself, yet not lightly enough to be a mare, filly, or colt. There weren't many lean apple stallions, so Big Macintosh was unsurprised at the voice that hailed him. Ain't you coming inside? He shook his head without turning around. Rayburn tried right up behind him, bending his neck so he could look up at his big into Big Macintosh's face. In actual fact, he just got a good look at his cousin's upturned chin. You sure? Granny Smith broke out the apple cider. It's turned into real shindig in there. Despite popular opinion, they didn't sell every scrap of cider they made each year. Granny kept back a barrel or two for special occasions and had stockpiled more this year as she planned ahead for the family reunion. Even though Applejack had taken over organizing everything, he was willing to bet his sister hadn't known about the cider until Granny roped some pony into rolling it up the steps for the, from the cellar. The call of the cider didn't resonate enough with Big Macintosh to make him want to move. He had thought nothing could surprise him about the barn anymore. But here it was, unleashing more secrets on and about his family. He was beginning to think of it as some sort of magical place. No matter how many times I got knocked down, it sprang back up again. It had been the scene for some of the most significant moments of their lives. While showing them pictures of old reunions, Granny had also run across snapshots of their full hoods. Apple Bloom had scrummed in embarrassment at the photos of herself in a diaper, and then laughed at her sister and brother at the same age. Applejack had gazed for ages at a picture taken when she was no bigger than Junebug, and he still talked in a high voice like a spindly lay filly. However, the one that had snagged Big Macintosh's attention like cloth on a rusty nail had been taken long before any of them were born. A picture of two ponies whose faces could still be seen in himself and his sisters. The parents had married in that barn, and Granny Smith had doled it up brighter than a maypole. Her carefully assembled flower arrangements framed the hulking mare as she walked on hind legs carrying her new husband out into the sunlight while a dozen hats were tossing the air around them. Big Macintosh still missed them. It surprised him how fresh and old pain could feel. Applejack had some memories, but Applebloom had none. He was glad she looked up to her sister so, and he tried to be a good role model for her too. Sometimes though, it all got a bit much, even for his shoulders. He loved his extended family, but rebuilding the barn and being in such close proximity to the place in the newest photo where his parents didn't stand had made him comfortable. Rather than say anything, he had retreated outside and sat quietly with his thoughts, as was his habit. Brayburn didn't know his cousin well enough to read his mood. 
if he ever had a mind to play, Big Macintosh had the best poker face in the whole Apple family. Besides, Rayburn was younger, and always been closer to Applejack anyway. His playful nature was a good match for hers when they were younger, and he still retained his exuberance, even though life in Appaloosa had toned him down a bit. Life out there was harder than he had thought when he hauled a hoof to, the, to a new life in the wilderness, but like any apple, he was making a go of it. Big Macintosh could admire that kind of commitment. Big Macintosh? Yep. Did I do something wrong? To offend you? Nope. Now are y'all ever gonna look at me? He finally lowered his eyes from the weather rain. Apple Bloom and Babs had found it in a bush on one side of the first orchard. It shot straight up when the barn was destroyed. They had spent hours carefully knocking the dents out and polishing it to shine. Rayburn was watching him with concern. You know, you're worrying your sisters. Rayburn chastised. You done worried your own plenty in your time. He laughed. <laughs> True enough. Even so, I reckon Applejack would appreciate y'all coming back inside and being sociable. She said that? Not in so many words. I'll come back in a spell. Big Macintosh nodded. Rayburn didn't seem convinced, but clearly realized this was the best he was going to get. Big Macintosh wasn't one for wasting words. What he said, he meant. However much he matured, Rayburn wasn't cut out for sitting for long intervals, so he made his excuses and retreated back to the farmhouse. When he opened the door to enter, sounds of a party were released like a flock of noisy birds. Sounds like a real party. Strange Pinkie Pie wasn't there. Still, Big Macintosh did not move. This wasn't the same barn where his ma and pa got hitched, but parts of it were from the original building. If he sat here long enough, maybe we could spot them all woven into the new structure, the way certain physical features and personality traits of theirs had been woven into their children. Applejack was stubborn, just like pa. Apple Bloom was a dreamer, like Ma. Big Macintosh got his build from their mother, who had always been the heaviest and caused quite a stir when she chose a husband who overbalanced onto his face if he so much as picked up a hammer. The way Granny Smith told it, Ma hailed from a hamlet that had since been absorbed into Ponyville, but at the time sat a ways distant. Every month when she and her, her own father came to town to sell their pots, she admired Pa from across the marketplace. Granny recalled seeing the dumpy little filly watching him try to lug sacks of apples like he had hung the moon. Those were the days before we realized he was a better gabber than a grabber, you understand? Your father had a gift of the gap, youngin. Your mother? Not so much. Ma had thought herself too ugly and plain until she finally gathered enough courage to cross that marketplace and buy herself an apple from him. That opened the floodgates and Pa had been so blown away by her courtship of him that right from the start he couldn't see any other man past the stars in his eyes. Ma had even gone to Granny and asked in her tech to turn way for her son's hoop in marriage, which made Granny laugh until her belly ached for a month of Sundays. Big Macdoors didn't know how much of that was true and how much was family legend. But they were nice stories, and worth hanging on to, just like the barn. After a while, when he was certain Brayburn wouldn't return, he said, You can come out now. Nothing happened. I know you're there. I know apples, and you all ain't no apple up in that tree. For a few minutes, nothing happened. Then, like a sloth slipping from its perch, black shape drooled out of a nearby tree, dropped out of a nearby tree. It resolved itself into a pony that walked out of the shadows and stood glaring at him like he had shaken the tree, the trunk to make her fall out. See? Big Macintosh said affirmatively. See what? She demanded. You ain't no apple. She rolled her eyes. Well, duh. She continued to glare. When he didn't respond, the expression wavered. Aren't you gonna say something? Nope. He smiled at himself. Except that. And that. You're a real comedian. 
He looked at her. She stood like she expected him to say something uncharitable. He wondered what he had done to give her a cause to think that. Instead, he chose to say nothing and went back to gazing at the new barn. She shifted from hoof tooth. You guys built that thing pretty quick, she said at last. Evidently, she liked silence, if Mr. Brayburn did. Yep. Many hooves make light work, huh? Yep. Must be nice. She said this so quietly, he wasn't sure she had, he had heard her right. He flicked an ear in her direction, which she apparently noticed because she cleared her throat. <coughs> we'll see how long this one lasts, huh? How many times has this barn been destroyed now, anyway? Ten? Twenty? A hundred? Sixteen. Sixteen times he had sat here like this, looking for signs of the old and the new. Really? She sounded surprised. You kept count? Yep. Wow. I'm not sure if that's sad or impressive. He shrugged. It really bothered him what other ponies thought of him. As long as his family and his farm was alright, he had little cause to be dissatisfied. Well, he thought with a flicker, as long as his sister and her friends didn't slip him any more love potions, that is. After a long moment, she said, You sure like looking at that barn, don't you? Yep. I don't get it. He shrugged in. Why in the hell did you get me to come down off that tree? Come out of that tree? If you didn't want to talk to me. I could just as easily have stayed up there and been comfortable for my nap. That ain't why you were up in the tree. Why so? He shook his head. It's evening. Yeah, and? You don't nap of an evening. Besides, you was up there all day. You noticed me? She sounded shocked. Realizing her increased volume, she lowered her voice. Why didn't you say anything? He shrugged. How to put into words that he had known exactly why she was there who she was really there for, and why she hadn't revealed herself to the rest of the Apple family. It was beyond simply respecting their right to a private family function. Big Macintosh recalled the last noteworthy thing he had witnessed in the barn in its last incarnation, but knew this pony wouldn't understand the significance. Besides, he couldn't mention it now. They hadn't, and it wasn't his place to broach their secrets, even with them. Applejack sure worked. Applejack sure worked hard today, huh? What? Uh, yeah, I guess. Mighty proud of her. Great, whatever. She feigned disinterest. Listen, I'm gonna head off. Wait. At long last, now he had a good reason to, Big Macdosh got to his hooves. He shook out his mane and muscles, sore from the day's labors, and cramping from staying for so long. He lumbered towards the farmhouse, pausing to look over his shoulder. You coming? Me? He nodded. Uh, it may have escaped your notice, big guy, but I'm not an apple. She flapped her wings for emphasis and moved her cutie mark at him, displaying its lack of anything fruit-based. See? I see. Great. So, um, yeah, I gotta fly. I see you. What? She scrunched up her nose. Is this one of those strict statements like twi that Twilight likes? If a tree falls alone in the every forest, doesn't make a noise, yada yada yada. He regarded her, and remembered Applejack this, the day she came home with stories about her brand new, amazing friend who do so many awesome things. She had galloped along the path so fast she tumbled and still had a tiny scar under her chin from being the dirt. Being cleaned up hadn't stopped her from telling them all about the Pegasus who could do a loop de loop, barrel roll, nose dive, plus a hundred other tricks but who didn't live with their parents on account of them not being around anymore. Applejack didn't know what that meant at the time. These days, she was intimately aware of the feeling, but it was difficult to be truly alone in a family like the Apples. They had rallied when Granny Smith found herself with three young ponies to raise, and her own grief to deal with, and he had never forgotten what it was like to have some pony show kindness, without want of something in return. Neither mare had told him about them, so he had respected their wishes and right to privacy. Even so, something about the sight of a pegasus covered in twigs and leaves from a day of subterfuge simply so she could watch Applejack and be happy with her family, Applejack be happy with her family, 
made him want to show some of that apple kindness. I see you, he said again, his lab lugubrious manner, and your family. So you're coming inside or what? She stared at him. He wasn't sure what was in that stare. Astonishment? Suspicion? Panic? He returned it with a blank look of his own. No pony in all of Equestria had him beat on the perfect blank look. Really, it was a good thing he didn't like cards. You're... She looked like she wanted to say crazy, but her sneer faltered and instead ended with, Sure they wouldn't mind if I crash the party? Can't crash if you're invited. Big Mac turned and walked up the path, confident she would follow. Yeah, she bit her lip and half turned away, clearly racked with indecision. Then she drew herself up tall and tried after him like she had a right to be there. You have a point, big guy. The look on his sister's face was worth it. Big Macintosh nodded at her and headed for the side about where Braeburn passed him a foaming mug. Looks like you picked up a stray there, cousin. Ain't that Applejack's buddy? Reckon I met her out when they came to Appaloosa. He clugged his own cider and dragged a hoof across his mouth. A real firebrand from what I can recall. Yep. Big Macintosh gulped the cider until there was none left. The buzz was nothing compared to his sit with his sister's happiness as he introduced her secret special sun pony into her family, and Rainbow Dash's expression when she was mobbed by foals and thralled by her wings. Soon, she was offering them turns around the orchard, and all the ponies were welcoming her into their ranks, just as they had a mare who thought herself too plain and ugly for love all those years ago. This has been... That was... Big Brother. Written... By Obab Scribbler. Read by Autumn Breeze. Whew, okay, I finished that reading. Uh, this is actually the second time I finished the reading. Last time it didn't quite work. The thing I was recording on apparently stopped, like, well before I finished reading, so I had to do this all over again. Uh, now, I apologize if. That seemed a little rough. Keep in mind this is my first ever time doing a reading. And I had I really hope my voicing wasn't too bad. I, I pray to God you weren't all didn't feel your ears bleeding at my attempts at Applejack, Rainbow Dash as a Philly, and later Rainbow Dash and Granny Smith. I pray to God your ears were not bleeding at that. And I apologize if they were. I cannot really do voices too well. Uh, next time when I do do a reading, it will be of an all stallions or all male characters because that'll be a lot easier for me to do. Uh, not sure when I'll do that though. However, I wanted to do this because a few days ago it was Obab Scribbler's birthday. And several people did things for her birthday, like some sent her fan art, some people did uh, birthday videos. Lost Narrator did a reading of the things we do for, uh, which was another of Scribbler's stories. And it made me want to do something as well. So I did this reading of Big Brother, and I hope it works. I, I hope it is okay. Scribbler, this was mainly for you. Happy birthday. I realize this is three days late. It's two days late for you. Three days for me because it was the 15th here before it was... It was your birthday here before it was your birthday over where you are. So it's three days late on my count. But happy birthday and I hope you had a great day and I hope you enjoy this reading. And I really can't think of anything else to say without rambling, and I really don't want to ramble. So I'm going to leave it there because I've now got to edit this thing, and I'm not sure how well that's going to go because I've never edited anything. i got to use Movie Maker for this, and I'm really worried. Uh, but because of that, 
Till next time, uh, later everybody.